Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to what could be the UK's best private car collection. And I'm about to show you every single car in it. Before I head inside and give you a tour, I want to quickly tell you about HelloFresh. Uh, they got in touch with me three or four weeks ago and offered to send me some of their meals. And I've got to be honest, I've become obsessed uh, with the amount that I'm out and about filming and traveling. One of me and my wife Vicky's least favorite conversations is, what are we going to have for dinner? Actually, one of our least favorite things to do is go to the supermarket and go up and down the aisles trying to get inspired. Well, HelloFresh basically remove all of that anxiety. You sign up to one of their meal plans, they send you a box with all the pre-portioned ingredients to make super delicious meals. I ordered the, the Thai pork, the meatballs, and the tacos, and they were all super yummy and super easy to make. I am no Gordon Ramsay, but you follow these super simple step-by-step guides and that's just kind of fun. We felt like it was a bit of a challenge each evening. I only really like to promote products that I think will make your life easier or better and HelloFresh has made my life easier and better. And amazingly, they're offering you 50% off your first box, 35% off your next three boxes and three free gifts if you sign up using my code seen through glass. I think that's a ridiculous offer. The link is in the description. If, like me, you're struggling when it comes to dinner time, I highly recommend you go check out HelloFresh. Anyway, now let's go check out some cars. So welcome to Duncan Hamilton Rothko. Now I'm sure lots of you would have heard of or seen this place before because the Duncan Hamilton part is actually fellow YouTuber Archie Hamilton's family business. And now some of you might not know that very sadly last year Archie's father actually passed away which means Archie and the rest of his family are now much more involved with the business. Having said that, I did tell Archie I didn't want him to be part of today's video. <laughs> that's, by the way, that's some friendly banter, just in case you think I'm a dick. That's, he gets it. So yes, I thought today we would kick things off with the Duncan Hamilton side of things, because whilst these cars are all actually for sale and not strictly part of a private collection, as you can probably see, they are fairly outrageous and include things like this Mercedes C11, an endurance racing icon which was driven by none other than Michael Schumacher. I think a lot of people forget that prior to Schumi's big F1 debut, he was a successful endurance racer for Mercedes-Benz. That's why he made his return to F1 with Mercedes in 2009. He was almost coming home because yes, in 1990 he drove this car with Jochen Mass, got a couple of podiums and even a victory and that really helped put him on the map with Formula One teams, helped get him his big debut and this car just looks so aggressive. 1990 and it's still aerodynamically so cool and always looks advanced, uh, iconic silver the paintwork come around the front it's just such a beast and yeah for me being a massive Schumacher fan seeing this part of his history a very important part of his, his history is super cool Continuing the kind of random ties to Formula One in this room, this is Carlos Sainz Sr. So Carlos Sainz, the current Ferrari Formula One driver, his dad, it's his original WRC car from 2001, a Ford Focus WRC. Uh, Colin McRae also raced one of these. Absolutely iconic for early noughties rallying. Check out this Jag, XJR11 from 1989 with the iconic silk cut livery. This is one of my all time favorite liveries. I actually wanted to apply it to a Jaguar XE Project 8, even with those gold wheels. Um, now this car was actually the Mercedes Sauber C11's big rival in 1990. They went to head to head for the championship. Uh, number four was piloted by uh, Andy Wallace, who I did some filming with when I went to visit Bugatti. Uh, he's a man who likes high speed. Um, this thing unfortunately didn't win the championship, um, but still I think is an icon from that era. Now this is outrageously cool, one of Ayrton Senna's F3 cars. Now when this car came into stock with Duncan Hamilton it was yellow but in period all of his F3 cars were blue so he thought oh maybe we're gonna have to do some investigation or maybe even restore it slightly but as they peeled away the yellow they found the original paint 
underneath. So it's an unbelievably cool thing to see, especially when you notice that at this point in his career, Ayrton was still racing with his father's surname, De Silva. So it's quite rare to see that denoted on a car. Super special bit of kit if you're into your kind of Senna history or just in general motorsport history. It's also tiny. This is a Chopin 962 CR. This is essentially a road legal 90s Le Mans car. Uh, basically a guy called Vern Chopin, who was a very successful racing driver, dominated Le Mans in 1983 in a Porsche 956. He also won a big Japanese championship in a Porsche 956 in the same year. Uh, was working with Porsche to develop a carbon chassis 962 for the road. Still had Le Mans engine, Le Mans running gear, as I mentioned before, it's a full on Le Mon car, but with a road going body designed by Chopin, lots of sort of 962 uh, race car elements, um, but with the Reynard carbon chassis. This is a one of one. They did build a couple of others, but they were all kind of prototype vehicles. Um, this actual car raced at Le Mans in 1990, which is fairly outrageous, and then got this beautifully sculpted 962 CR body on it. A lot of the funding for the project came from Japan because of Chopin's uh, victory in that championship in 1983 um, but yeah absolutely mad I think it was a 3.3 litre turbocharged engine five-speed manual I mean look how tiny the cockpit is must be absolutely mad to drive this thing on the road now whilst I'm sure I could spend all day in here freaking out about the cars for sale I did promise to show you what I think could be the UK's best private car collection so let's head over to the Rothko side So here we go then, welcome to one of the most incredible collections I've ever witnessed. To kind of understand what we're looking at, basically there's one word. Golf, one of the most iconic racing liveries of all time. Started, of course, with the GT40 from Ford, but since then, a whole range of cars have raced with the iconic blue and orange livery. And this Rothko collection includes every single one of them. Yep, that's right, every golf car is behind and around me. Absolutely mad, I'm not gonna know what they all are, I will admit that, but there are some truly historic race cars in here. Let's go check them out. So yes, this is where it all began back in the late 60s with the Ford GT40, an absolute icon. This particular car, uh, raced in 1968, was actually used by Ford and Golf as the kind of press car back in the day, and now Rothko, you kind of use it in a similar kind of way, just to celebrate the heritage of this iconic uh, yeah, color scheme and livery. And the thing is, it's not just an iconic livery. So many of these cars were insanely successful in period, and here you go, a prime example of a much more modern Golf liveried race car, the Aston Martin DBR9 GT1, which won its class at Le Mans in 2008. 13th overall, I think, still wearing the dirt from that race. It's quite a sort of, well, it happens a lot. Le Mans winners don't get washed. The minute they cross the line, they keep all the muck and grime from their victory, and it's so cool to see. But, you know, prime example of two very successful, very iconic golf race cars separated by, well, a whole chunk of time. My maths isn't quite quick enough, 2050, it's 68, 78, 88, 98, 40 years. <laughs> You can tell I wasn't good at maths at school. Now, for me, post Ford GT and pre Aston Martin, one of the kind of most meaningful partnerships for golf in racing, the partnership with McLaren, which obviously was recently kind of reinstated with the McLaren Formula One team doing that special golf livery for the Monaco Grand Prix. Golf a sponsor once again of McLaren racing. But so many of the early McLaren racing cars were adorned with golf logos or golf liveries. Some of them are right behind me. Whether it be Indy cars like this one here, driven by Peter Revson, or the big old Can-Am cars, which I always think look absolutely mad. Uh, this one, I think Denny Hume piloted to three victories uh, back in 1970. They're just kind of these big 
blocks. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous because you have this little tiny cabin with these minuscule seats and then this huge engine behind you and this big old chunk of bodywork. But yes, all adorned, as I mentioned, with golf logos or stickers or wording. So whenever I think back to this era of racing, McLaren are just, yeah, associated with the golf brand. But it did continue to more modern cars. We obviously got uh, a 12C race car there, but in the middle an F1 GTR long tail. Now, I actually saw this exact car at that Kicklow Classic driver event a few weeks ago. Very cool to see it again. For me, it's, I think, the best livery for the F1 GTR long tail. Looks absolutely amazing. And kind of like a weird, nerdy thing to note. If you look here, this 12C, it's that kind of very familiar, light, pastel-ish blue, which I guess you associate with golf. But for the F1 GTR long tail, it's way more metallic. You can see it under the lights. It looks very sort of liquid-like, which is really nice, but it was a little bit different for golf. So strangely, the guys at the Kicklow and Classic Driver event failed to mention this small anecdote about Wayno Clinic, the sponsor for the 1995 Le Mans winning McLaren F1, and also this F1 GTR long tail, which the guys at Rothgrove just told me. Wayno Clinic did penis surgery in Japan. <laughs> I had penis enlargement or shortening, I don't know, but that's what the business is. <laughs> so suddenly, F1s are, well, are they cooler? I don't know, but it's kind of madder that, yes, Wayno Clinic were the biggest sponsor of one of the most iconic race cars of all time, and they're just working on penises in Japan, and their logo's all over the place. Now, this is a properly mad car. It's called the Halmet, and it featured a helicopter turbine engine. It raced at Le Mans, and yes, sponsored by Golf. Golf were quite prolific with their sponsorship, I think, in this era. Apparently, absolutely mad. Had, well, engine, lots of brake failure because they actually had no engine braking. They'd come off the power, and the engine would just keep thrusting them forward. It's a bizarre thing to see, but kind of brilliant, and yeah, part of the collection. As predicted, there are plenty of these cars that I didn't really know too much about. I'm a big motorsport fan, but I will happily admit, unless it's a 1990s forward Formula One car, yeah, my knowledge can be a bit sketchy, but it doesn't really matter because you just look at the, the names of the drivers on the side of the car or the sort of manufacturer of that car and you realise just how important so many of them are. And then you look at the plaques and realise what they achieved. It's just mind-boggling. Golf seemed to be a kind of, well, a, a quick pass to success. If you want to get a victory in motorsport, stick a golf logo on your car. Now, if you're looking at all of these cars, like me, with your jaw on the floor, but worried that they're just kind of, you know, sitting in a warehouse or looking pretty and not being driven and enjoyed, well, you're wrong. These cars are driven regularly and hard. Take, for example, these 1970s McLaren Yardley Formula One cars. They won Monaco Historic this year. There's plenty of examples of these cars being thrashed on track and still being competitive, still flying that golf flag, which makes this collection in my mind, even better. Another prime example, actually, is this Gallardo GT1, which I saw earlier this year when I went to the Spa 24 Hour to watch my friend Phil racing in a DBR9 GT1. Yeah, this thing was also doing laps and being super competitive. And actually, I'm pretty sure that car won the overall event. So yeah, right here, more demonstrations of the fact that these cars are used and abused and celebrated. And finally, once you move past all these incredible cars, as you can imagine, your obsession turns to kind of memorabilia. Steve McQueen, very much linked with golf because of his role in the film 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's actually his original suit that he wore in the movie, but other endless bits of merch, you know, and also, well, trophies from victories and big old bits of artwork there. And then look at this Lamborghini tractor in the golf colors. I hope you'd agree that this place has been absolutely mind-blowing and I feel like I haven't even shown you half of it. It's been a whistle-stop tour, but huge thanks to Archie and the whole team down here at Duncan Hamilton Rothko for letting me come in for a, a brief five minutes and at least give you a sneak peek at some of the stuff. We'll be back to show you some of the stuff that I've missed and also take something out on the road. So stay tuned for that. But if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.